we have been talking about uh, hyponatremia and uh, we have seen the three different forms of hyponatremia. Number one, isotonic hyponatremia, which we see in patients with uh, hyperlipidemia and hyperproteinemia. Secondly, we have seen hypertonic hyponatremia, which we see in patients who, are, who have hyperglycemia and also manitol administration. And in this lecture today, I want to talk about uh, hypotonic hyponatremia. Hypotonic hyponatremia. And this is the most common cause of hyponatremia. And I want to highlight sodium's role as the predominant extracellular asthma. You see, potassium, most of it stays intracellularly, but extracellularly, sodium occupies the space. So anything that changes the environment in extracellular space can dramatically change the concentration of uh, sodium in extracellular space. So we have this hypotonic hyponatremia. Again, there are three different kinds. There is euvolemic hyponatremia, there is uh, hypovolemic hyponatremia and hypervolemic hyponatremia. You see, that's a complicated system. First, there is isotonic, hypotonic, hypotonic. And in hypotonic, there are three kinds, euvolemic and uh, hypovolemic and hypervolemic. That classification, if you remember that, it helps a lot. So in hypovolemic, hyponatremia, the body tries to preserve that intravascular volume. And to preserve that intravascular volume, the body often, it sacrifices serum osmolality. See, many times when we lose water, we don't lose water by itself. We also lose the, uh, the sodium. So there is a salt wastage along with water wastage. But many times we get back only water and that causes problems. There is a syndrome called cerebral salt wasting syndrome. We see in patients with uh, uh, cerebral problems. And these patients will have hypotension and also hyponatremia. And they will have some cerebrovascular accidents like stroke or cerebral tumors and after neurosurgery. They can go into cerebral salt waste, wasting syndrome and uh, you see hypotension and hyponatremia along with other neurological signs and symptoms in these patients. So the point is when the body doesn't get enough water, the ADH kicks in and the ADH causes free water retention and that free water retention increases the volume of the water and sodium volume goes down. Next, eubolemic hyponatremia and eubolemic hyponatremia is also mediated by ADH and we, we see eubolemic hyponatremia in hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency, some medications cause it and also SIADH. SIADH causes eubolemic hyponatremia. Now hypothyroidism causes eubolemic hyponatremia. How? When there is hypothyroidism, ADH will increase in concentration. The same with uh, adrenal insufficiency. And uh, it, it indirectly affects the ADH concentration. And when there is adrenal insufficiency, there is uh, hyper uh, cortisol. But, I mean, cortisol level decreases. As a result, hyperkalemia happens and hyperaldosteronism kicks in. That is, there is hypocortisolism and hyperaldosteronism. Hypoaldosteronism causes the potassium go up and sodium go down. Now some medications also causes, the most important medications that causes hyponatremia are thiazide diuretics. Thiazide diuretics, if you start a world or female patient, uh, on a thiazide, like uh, hydrochlorothiazide, 
you will see this problem but loop diuretics do not cause hyponatremia so that's an important point these uh, loop diuretics do not cause hyponatremia but thiazide diuretics can cause the problem then comes uh, NZs NZs they can increase the concentration of uh, ADH and cause hyponatremia then we have these psychiatric medications like uh, SSRIs like paroxetin and uh, uh, cetalopram and all those SSRIs uh, in elderly patients they can cause hyponatremia because they increase the activity of ADH so that's an important point right there the other medications ACE inhibitors angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors you see the interesting thing is they do not block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 in the brain what happens angiotensin 2 it stimulates the ADH secretion so as a result ADH concentration go up, so free water retention happens, sodium level goes down, hyponatremia happens. So ACE inhibitors can cause hyponatremia. Then we should also think about uh, these illegal drugs like Actase, MDMA. What happens is when these patients take uh, Actase, they develop hyperthermia. And as a result, they become uh, very warm and uh, very thirsty and they start to drink a lot of, lot of water and their body water's volume increases and uh, sodium concentration falls down. So MDMA and its metabolites, they can increase water intake and they can also increase ADH and as a result, uh, hyponatremia happens. The other thing is... Uh, Psychogenic polydepsia. Psychogenic polydepsia is an important cause. We see this in psychiatric patients. Many of the psychiatric medications can cause anticholinergic side effects. Anticholinergic side effects, they cause dry mouth. And the patients start to drink a lot and a lot of water and their body water increases and their sodium falls down. So psychogenic polydipsia can cause hyponatremia. Then nausea. Nausea increases ADH concentration and results in free water retention. Then pain. And what happens is when there is a lot of pain, there will be a lot of uh, cortisol activity in the body which increases the ADH release and cause again hyponatremia. So you see even a patient in hospital or somewhere with a lot of pain can cause, can have hyponatremia and patients after surgery, immediately after surgery there might be increase in ADH release and patient can, can have hyponatremia sometimes medical procedures like colonoscopy. Colonoscopy can cause hyponatremia. So think about all the causes and I'm, I'm talking about here about uh, uvolemic hyponatremia. These patients have normal volumes but low potassium, oh, sorry, low sodium. Now HIV patients almost 40% of uh, HIV patients will have hyponatremia. The causes are different. They may be on medications which can cause hyponatremia. They may have adrenal insufficiency. They may have uh, hypoaldosteronism. They may have uh, hypothyroidism. They may have uh, SIADH. They may have pulmonary disease. So, they may have even malignancy, some cerebral tumor causing SIADH, which is resulting in hyponatremia. So, when you see these patients like HIV and hyponatremia, investigate for the causes. Then, athletes, 
endurance athletes you see in new york city or in some of these big cities like boston we see lot of people running in marathons they run from morning to evening and they live with uh, tons of water they start drinking these hypotonic fluids what happens they they drink and drink and drink and their ADH levels also go up and uh, there is a lot of free water retention and as a result they develop hyponatremia so athletes should not drink too much water i mean that's an imp- important point they should drink only when they are thirsty but not like a, to prevent dehydration they should not drink tons of water and resulting in serious hyponatremia i mean there are cases where athletes run and run and drink and drink and develop hyponatremia and died so that's not a good thing now a few words about uh, sidh sidh is basically high adh secretion and uh, don't confuse that some people think sidh what is it is adh high or low sidh is high adh and it's very easy to remember if you know the mechanism of adh adh normal regulation of adh is to brain and to the lungs we have baroreceptors in the lungs and the neural output in the brain so these two organs the brain and the chest these two organs regulate adh release that's why these two organs i mean any diseases that affect these two organs will cause in most cases sidh easy to remember isn't it so brain problems like uh, neoplasms and uh, uh, cerebrovascular events and uh, infectious cerebral diseases all these brain problems can cause sidh lung problems like lung tumors and uh, pneumonia and uh, metabolic lung disorders and uh, so different different lung disorders so remember that brain and lung most commonly causes uh, sidh also of course we have a uh, the small cell lung cancer which autonomously increase adh release and causes hyponatremia and there are also medications that cause uh, sidh there are tons of medications i don't want to go into all of those details but uh, the main point here is remember the physiology and physiology itself teaches pathology okay so hyponatremia coming from uh, sidh coming from uh, what we see in uh, hiv patients i also talked about psychogenic polydipsia when psychotic psychiatric patients drink lot of lot of water resulting in the drop in their hypo uh, in their sodium level causing uh, hyponatremia and uh, so polydipsia seen in psychiatric patients can have this problem so uh, basically oh, yeah. the classification is more important you will emic hyponatremia hypovolemic volemic hyponatremia then hypervolemic hyponatremia hypervolemic hyponatremia so these classification is very important if you don't go through that classification you will get confused no doubt and the classification is also important to think about how to treat these patients because ultimately treatment depends on etiology so always think about etiology of hyponatremia before you start treating these patients and that's one thing i want to emphasize in this thing so finally i will finish with hypervolemic hypotonic hyponatremia hypervolemic hypotonic hyponatremia 
we see this in uh, diseases like cirrhosis when the liver is affected heart failure when the heart is affected nephrotic syndrome when the kidney is affected so you see liver heart and kidney these three organs they play a very very important role in the total body water when these three organs are affected when they don't do their job well we will have uh, this fluid hypervolemic condition of the body i mean you take uh, heart failure for example there is decreased cardiac output and increased renin angiotensin aldosterone activity and adh secretion increases and it causes water retention that water retention drops sodium level so that is the main thing to not hear you say we have seen the same thing in hypovolemic uh, hyponatremia what happened in hypovolemic hyponatremia adh going up and causing hyponatremia the same thing is happening here even though we say it is hypervolemic hyponatremia the heart and kidney when they fail to do their job adh concentration goes up again and causes hyponatremia so those are the most important points i wanted to stress this morning and uh, so remember those uh, important points by three things isotonic hyponatremia hypertonic hyponatremia hypotonic hyponatremia then hypotonic hyponatremia is again three things there is euvolemic hypotonic hyponatremia there is hypovolemic hypotonic hyponatremia there is hypervolemic hypotonic hyponatremia so remember that classification box and tomorrow i'm going to talk about diagnosis and treatment of hyponatremia please join me and also visit me for more like uh, we post like hundreds of videos at uh, www.drpaul.org that is www.drpaul.org you can also uh, uh, subscribe to our daily videos where we send these videos thank you very much have a nice day god bless you